draping me, inshallah. I love you, man. Allah Malik. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستنصره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن حبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا نشهد أنه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك My dear brothers and sisters All praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala All thanks and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The one who guided us to this straight path of Islam We seek Allah's help and Allah's guidance we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help in every things of our life, in all affairs of our life. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our own self and from the shortcomings of our own deeds. And indeed, whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides is the one who's truly guided. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep guidance from, none can guide. And I bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only true God, the one God that is worthy of worship. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam at tasliman kathira is his prophet and his messenger. He delivered the message and conveyed the trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted him with. And he left us on a straight path 
as far as we keep our footing on this path, it would lead us to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, I remind myself and all of you of a command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the Quran in several occasions where he always reminded us to be mindful of him, to exercise taqwa. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ O you who believe, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he deserves to be mindful of. And never die except in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a state of Islam. The concept of taqwa, my dear brothers and sisters, is a very important concept in our faith. And if you go through the Qur'an, the mentioning of taqwa and al-muttaqeen is so prevalent in the Qur'an that we really need to focus on that con concept and understand it properly. Though this is not the specific topic of the khutbah, inshallah, today, I want to touch on it briefly, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَا نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذنوب إلا الله وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أُولَئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ In these series of verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command the believers to hasten, to run, to exert all their effort to attain forgiveness from their Lord. Hasten to forgiveness of your Lord and paradise as wide as heaven and earth prepared for al-muttaqeen, for those who exercise taqwa, for those who are God conscious, for those who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-muttaqeen. And then he described them briefly in the verses that come after that. Who are those muttaqeen and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described their character in the verses that follows by specifically mentioning certain elements that their exercise of taqwa will reflect on their action and on their behavior. How does taqwa will reflect on their conduct? Allah says, those who spend in cases of adversity and in cases of prosperity. They will spend for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what their condition. They are in good shape or in bad shape. And that spending, my dear brother and sister, sister does not have to be only constrained to spending wealth. It could be spending you know, from your knowledge, from your advice, from your time, from your effort, from your wealth, but to give, to give others for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They spend in cases, whenever in, in adversity and in prosperity. And those who control their anger. When they are angry, when they are perturbed, when they are instigated, they don't cross the line. They keep themselves in check. They put the brake on and they behave in a manner that is respectable. And those who pardon people. They pardon people. They pardon those who wronged them. They pardon those who put them in difficult situation. They pardon those who might have taken their rights. Wallahu yuhibbu al And Allah loved those who exercise ihsan, the best kind of behavior, the best kind of conduct. So Allah enumerated 
the characters of al-muttaqeen, those who exercise taqwa, in three elements here. Spending, controlling anger, and pardoning people. And all three elements, my dear brothers and sisters, are related to the way we deal with others. Related to our conduct with other people around us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ And those who are, uh, still he's talking about al-muttaqeen, and this is very important point. Because sometimes we put lofty goals that are unattainable. Allah says those muttaqeen, when they commit a vice, when they commit a grave mistake, a vice, something that's objectionable, they're still muttaqeen, but they are making mistakes. So don't always in your mind keep this parallel that if, if people are really muttaqeen, they're going to be angels. No. We will have people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love and they are very good people, but they would make mistakes. Everybody make mistakes. كل ابن آدم خطاء وخير الخطاءون وخير الخطائين التوابون. Every human being will commit mistakes, and the best among those who make mistakes are those who repent, and that's what Allah described al muttaqin When they commit a vice, when they wrong themselves by doing something wrong, by transgressing on the commands of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they would remember. Allah. They would remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They would not indulge in their wrong conduct. They would immediately hit the brake. The same way they hit the brake when, it was ang when they were angry, they would hit the brake when it is transgressing upon themselves and wronging themselves by committing wrongs and wrong conduct. They would stop. They would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they would seek forgiveness for their sins. And indeed, who forgives sins but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So that action, when they remember, when they go back, when they stop, when they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask forgiveness, is an act that also characterizes al-muttaqeen. They know Allah is the one who forgives the sins, so they ask for forgiveness. They repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they would not insist on continuing doing the sin. They would not insist on continuing doing the sin. And this is very important point, my dear brothers and sisters. As the ulama said, there is nothing big, there is no kabira ma'al istighfar. There is no major sin with forgiveness, with seeking Allah's forgiveness. If you commit a major sin and you seek Allah's forgiveness, Allah can forgive everything. Except that you associate someone with him. And there is no saghira ma'al israr. There is no small sin if you insist on doing it. When one of us is afflicted by some kind of sin and we do it repeatedly and we start reaching a point where it be, we become neutralized against that sin and we do it without thinking, then this is very dangerous. We need to review our conduct. Even the small sins, when we insist on them, it becomes a problem. Very common in our Muslim Ummah today, people engage in backbiting. And they think it is something simple. It's actually a major sin. And they continue doing it. And when reminded, say, no, 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 I'm not backbiting. I'm just, you know, this is, this is, this is, true. This is true. It doesn't matter if it's true. Even if it's true, it's backbiting. And if you insist on it, that's the problem. And this is regarding any other sin. We need to be aware of our conduct and be accountable to ourselves before we are accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this case, Allah described them that they were accountable. They hold themselves accountable. And they say, they seek Allah's forgiveness knowing that He is the one who forgives all sins. And they would not insist on their action while they are aware of it, while they know. And Allah then described their reward. He says those reward, their reward is forgiveness from their Lord. And gardens that have rivers flowing underneath, underneath it, where they are staying in it forever. And indeed, this is 
the best reward for those who act upon the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this series of verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about taqwa, muttaqeen, and how that taqwa translates into action on two fronts. One front is the way we deal with people. You know, infaq, spending, controlling anger, and pardoning people. And the second front, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about how they deal with themselves. How they hold themselves accountable. That the way they deal with themselves is self-accountability. They don't just indulge in life without checks, without balances, without going back and reviewing their action. And the Prophet والسلام, subhanallah, mentioned the same exact topics in one of his hadith, where he was advising one of the companion, and he told him, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتْ اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتْ be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. You are with people or you are alone. You are in your own home country or you are in a foreign country. You are in your own city or you are on vacation. You have to exercise taqwa in all situation, in all places. Ittaqillah haythu ma kunt. Taqwa. Wa atbi'i sayyi'ata al-hasanata tamhuha. And follow a bad deed with a righteous deed, it shall wipe it out. Self-accountability. How would you remember to follow a bad deed with a righteous deed if you are not self-accountable? If you are not holding yourself accountable to your action, you would forget. You would not even pay attention. Self-accountability is the same exact point mentioned here. And the third one, وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ and deal with people with the best of manner. The same thing, how we deal with people. And these three elements, the, the most important element is taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal, awareness and mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the two other elements that really emanate from it, which is the way we deal with others and the way we deal with ourselves, is really the three elements the three-legged stool that provided the principles and bases for our Islamic civilization and Islamic culture in a way. Muslims throughout history and Islamic culture and dynasties, the Umayyad, the Abbasiyin, the Ottoman, they built their dynasties on those elements. Not specifically there because the leaders were this way, because the ummah and the general population was this way. And it's known in sociology, my dear brothers and sisters, for every civilization, the basis of those civilizations, when they start to deteriorate, the civilization start to deteriorate. It will start to decline. And no wonder we see what we are in decline as Muslims. Because all those three elements are in decline in our own conduct or in our own behavior. We need to look upon ourselves and how much of those three elements we implement in our life. We need to gauge our taqwa. We need to gauge our manners. We need to gauge our self-accountability. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, when he was challenged on the way he dressed and so on and his appearance, he got angry and he rebuked Abu Ubaidah radiallahu an. And he told him, نحن قوم أعزنا الله بالإسلام ومهما ابتغينا العزة بغيره ذللنا We are people who were dignified by our faith, by Islam, by submission to Allah. And no matter how we seek dignity by any other means, we will be humiliated. We will not be dignified by wealth. We will not be dignified by power. We will not be dignified by knowledge worldly knowledge we will only be dignified if we follow the commands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tansurullah yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum if you give victory to allah allah will give you victory that element 
That success of Muslim and Muslim Ummah is based and built on those three elements, on taqwa, manners, and self-accountability. And when we neglect them as an Ummah, the Ummah will decline. And this happened in history. And it's not a decline that we cannot get out of. It's a decline that can be reversed when we re-implement those elements. When we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the biggest enemy to those three elements, my dear brothers and sisters, the biggest, uh, you know, kind of element that would, would destroy those three things is hubbu dunya To be attached to dunya. Because it counters everything about taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It counters everything about good manners. It counters everything about self-accountability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَ النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Those who would transgress and they would prefer this worldly life, they will prefer worldly benefit, worldly gains, worldly attention, worldly mention, worldly power, worldly wealth, whatever it is, you name it, those, their abode will be the hellfire. فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَوَى وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَا قَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى As for those who are afraid of the of their action and conduct in the eyesight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they prevented themselves from following their own desires, those will be, their abode will be the paradise and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we look at the decline of the ummah, there is a burden on us. There is something we have done individually that we have responsibility for correcting is to regain our taqwa, is to regain our manners, is to regain our self-accountability. And when we talk about those elements in today's culture, sometimes you hear about them. Sometimes you hear about them. In professional training, they tell, they tell you about people's skill and how to deal with people kindly and how to, you know, do the right things, and so on. They'll tell you about, you know, being self-conscious, and look at yourself, and correct your own mistakes, and seek feedback, and do this and do that. There is a major difference, my dear brothers and sisters. It's very major difference, the way that current culture deal with those issues, good manner, people's skill, self-accountability, and how Islam look at it. From an Islamic perspective, it is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From Islamic perspective, it's done to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not done to gain worldly gains. Not to attain a better position. Not to be more successful at work. Not to be, to have chances of promotions. No, because those are all worldly gain. If we are engaging in that conduct for those gains, we're not going to get the pleasure of Allah. We're not going to get the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we are engaged in it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we don't pay attention to the worldly gain. Then we do it with regard, with no regard to whatever award I'm going to win or not win. And it's not going to impact me if people praise me or not praise me. I'm doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I'm doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I'm satisfied with him being pleased with me. I don't need anything else. And that's really the difference, the huge difference on how it's being taught today to professionals, to kids, to others, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muslims used to teach it to their children. And they used to exercise it in their own life. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us aware of our own conduct. And to make us among those who are muttaqeen, 
and to make us among those who are self-accountable for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروا. Please come forward so we have spaces in the back for our brothers who are coming late. Don't leave a, a spot in front of you and get close to each other, please, as much as you can. Please move forward. الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, just to summarize we're talking about the three-legged stool that really support Islamic values and Islamic principles and Islamic civilization in a way. The main leg of that stool is تقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى and from that principle emanates how we conduct ourselves with others and how we conduct ourselves with ourselves. What is our relationship with ourselves? What's our relationship with others? And the most important one is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is built on taqwa. So taqwa, good manners, and self-accountability. Each one of those, inshallah, We'll touch on it specifically in a khutbah, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Insha'Allah, Rabbil Alameen, if Allah gives us life. However, today, I just want to mention one thing so we can start exercising this in our own life. How would one know if I am doing this or not doing this? And I'm not speaking as a scholar, a fiqh scholar. I'm speaking about a person who try to learn on how to do those things. If you want to know how you gauge your, to gauge yourself against those principles, look at yourself when you get angry. Look at yourself when you get angry. How do you behave? How do you treat others? Look at yourself when you are alone at home with nobody there. What do you do? Look at yourself when you are in a country that you know nobody and you can do whatever you want and judge yourself that way. Look at yourself in the way you deal with your wife or the way you deal with your husband compared to how you deal people outside the house. Look at the way you deal with your children and judge yourself that way. Is my conduct something that I'm proud of? Is my conduct something that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is my conduct something that I want other to do to me? Am I dealing with my wife the way that I want my son-in-law to deal with my daughter? Am I, wheeling, am I dealing with my husband the way that I want my daughter-in-law to deal with my son? And if the answer is no, then I'm not following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at yourself when you deal with your subordinate at work. Look at yourself when you deal with your patient as a doctor, with your student as a teacher, with your customer as a salesman. Are you dealing with them the way you want to be dealt with? And if we are, that's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we are not, then there is a problem. And there is a course connection, that correction that we need to do. Look at yourself how you deal with other people's money. Do you want people to deal with your money the same way? Look at yourself when you trade, when you buy and sell, are you just? And if you are not, again, there is a self-correction that is needed. This is really the gauge, my brothers and sisters. This is how we can look at our own conduct and make a correction. 
We have the tools. We have the intellect. Allah gave us all the tools that we need. We just need to exercise it. We just need to put it in action. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, throughout the Quran, when he mentioned those who believe, he immediately linked it with those who amilu salihat. Inna alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat. Those who believe and do righteous deed. Our faith and our belief has to be translated into action. And if it's not, it's empty words. If it's not translated into action, it's empty word. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from our faith being empty words. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who exercise their faith with their action. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us among those whom action are intended for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, not for any other worldly gains, not for any other objective or goal other than to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عباد الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اعف عنا واغفر لنا وتوفنا مؤمنين اللهم ارضى عن سادات ديننا وموالينا سيدنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن تابعي وعن أصحابهم وتابعيهم إحسانا إلى يوم الدين اللهم يا رب ارزقنا حبك وحب من أحبك وحب كل عمل يقربنا إليك والله we ask you to grant us your love and the love of all action that you love and the love of all people that you love اللهم يا رب ارزقنا الجنة وأجرنا من النار والله we ask you to grant us paradise and keep us away from the hellfire اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمشايخنا ولمن له فضل علينا والله forgive us forgive our parents forgive our scholars forgive those who taught us good اللهم فرج عن إخواننا المسلمين المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها والله relieve the suffering of our brothers all over the world relieve the, the suffering of our brothers in Pakistan who are following who are suffering through the flood relieve the suffering of our brothers and sisters who are being subjected to injustices all over the world اللهم يا رب تقبل منا أعمالنا واجعلها خالصة لوجهك الكريم والله تقبل from us accept from us our deed and make it purely for your sake والله نسألك يا الله أن ترزقنا صحبة نبيك محمد يوم القيامة اللهم احشرنا في زمرته وتحت لوائه وارزقنا شفاعته وادخلنا الجنة بصحبته ومعيته ولا تحرمنا رؤيته يا رب العالمين O oh Allah, we ask you to grant us that to resurrect us with the, with the party of the Prophet والسلام, under your shade where there is no shade but your shade to grant us his intercession and to make us enter paradise in his company and to grant us the blessing of seeing him. Allahumma ya Rabbi, jalna min atba'ih wa jalna min ahlihi, min ahli, min ahli sunnatih واغفر لنا ذنوبنا وتقصيرنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا واعف عنا وارحمنا إنك أنت عفو غفور رحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون Dear brothers, before we make a comment, inshallah, just a reminder for myself and everyone in this congregation, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would replace every penny you spent for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support your masjid, support your home, support your community, support all the causes that goes in this community. We, this masjid is in need of your support. Tomorrow there is a fundraiser for the flood in Pakistan, support them. There are other fundraisers happening in the community in the next few weeks for the school, for other causes. Please support every good cause in this community. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the muttaqeen, those who spend, spend, my dear brothers. Anfiq wala taqsha min dil arshi iqlala. Spend and do not fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your rizq less. Allah will replace many, many, many fold, insha'Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim wa aqim as-salam. Allah, 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 Allah,
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قام للصلاة قد قام للصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استقيموا إلى الصلاة يرحمني ويرحمكم الله ترس واعتدلوا make your line straight fill in the gaps pray as if it is your last prayer الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم Jazakallah khair, brother Asha, for the khutbah and the reminders about um, ourselves and holding ourselves accountable in, the, in taqwa. Um, there is the youth um, group Al Zahrawat um, program is open for registration right now. Uh, the link is in the newsletter. So if you are interested, this is only for girls only. Al Zahrawat is for girls only. Uh, so please, if you are interested in uh, signing your daughter up, uh, the link is in the newsletter. Quran Connections registration, uh, the last day is tomorrow. So if you have not registered, uh, they already have over almost 400 students already registered. So if you are wanting to be part of this program, your children will be part of the program, now is the time. And the Quran Connection is where you build, people build their reading of the Quran, reading of Arabic so they can teach themselves the Quran with no uh, help from nobody when, once they, they graduate from that program. So this is important for you to uh, get your children in. Uh, the outreach, they have a bring your non-Muslim friends and neighbor and colleagues for our open house tomorrow at 1 p.m. So if you know anyone who is not a Muslim, who is either a friend, neighbor, colleague from work, uh, this is the best time to um, invite them to be there at 1 o'clock here in the mirror hall. Um, there is a, a Sheikh Mahmoud does Qiyam the, every first Saturday of every month. Um, uh, and then also uh, does the Quran uh, Halaqa every Saturday after Fajr, inshallah. So this is something that you can join. Uh, Sister Fatima Lat, Lat is um, uh, scheduled to do a talk on Friday, next Friday at 8 p.m. here at ICGC uh, with the education program. And then the family game night is uh, next week at, um, on the 18th from 6 to 9. Uh, please register with your children, your teens, and your wives, and your spouses, I should say. And then Umrah to with Musa is November the 18th. If you have not registered, the link is in the newsletter. Please do so as soon as you can. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.